Hello, this is Jeff from Baron Leathercraft, and today we're going to do a review on the Algo Laser Delta. It's a 22 watt laser. I'm going to start off by sharing some of the technical specs of this laser, and then we're going to go ahead and do some cutting and engraving. I want to see how fast I can get this machine to cut and engrave and still give us a quality cut and engrave. So let's go ahead and check it out. This is a 22 watt laser module and it uses second generation COS technology that compresses the laser spot from a rectangle to a square having a near 1.1 ratio on both low 3% or high power 100%. What that means is most commonly the laser beam on most lasers is rectangle. So they were able to squish it down into a square. So pretend it's like a point at the end of a pencil. It's a lot easier to draw in detail with a square than it would be a rectangle because it's an odd shape. One thing that's great about this module is this bottom comes off. When you're working with leather, sometimes leather as you cut it can fold up on the edges and then the laser module will snag onto it. This gives you a lot more headroom to be able to go over your leather without it snagging onto it and rooting your project. I felt the power supply was solid and of good construction. Here's all the specs if you want to check it out. Both the air assist and main manual are excellent. They mostly could derive the pictures and it was easy to follow. The air assist itself was made really well. It was very simple to set up. You just take one tube. You didn't need any fasteners. This would plug right in. There's also a filter in this thing. So if you open up the top, you see there's a washable filter. So you can keep that clean. This is the first of the air assist that I've gotten that comes with the filter, which is nice. This is the remote for the air assist. You can alter the pressure with this. It has an up and down button. One thing that is nice about this air assist I found was that you don't need a separate power source. The power source comes right from the laser module. This is the four pin cable that you plug in and Lightburn also recognizes the air assist. And this is where you plug in the air assist. It's in the front left hand side facing the laser and you just marry the two plugs together. You just, it has an adapter that you push in, then you slide the tube in there, and then it's in, you're good to go. The interface to plug everything in is in a great location. It is right above where we plug in the air assist. The cables are out of the way of the laser and nothing gets bogged down with each other. And there's your USB port. If you own a rotary roller, you no longer have to unplug your Y-axis. Just plug it into this terminal and flip the switch and it's ready to go. This laser was very easy to build. Basically it came with five screws. Four of them are to put the gantry on and one of them was the one I just turned in order to be able to tighten the gantry belt. If you need to tighten the Y-axis, it's on the back of the machine on both corners. You just take your Allen wrench out and make an adjustment. This laser has a safety key function. If the key is not in and turned on, it's not going to function. Plus the emergency stop button has some nice fancy lights on it. Green for go, red for no. Other safety features include active power out detection and protection, laser overexposure time limit, USB disconnect shutdown, as I said an emergency stop button, gyroscope detection, motherboard over temperature protection. I was thrilled to find out that this laser has Wi-Fi. If you notice when I do my laser engraving or cutting, I always have my laser outside and I was running cables right through the window because we have a hole in the screen. So now I don't have to do that anymore. It's very simple to set up. It's just a few clicks. It'll find your network. It'll ask you for your password. It'll apply an IP and you're in and it's up and running. The laser has a very cool control panel where you can pretty much manipulate every setting that there is on the device. You're also able to do engraving and cutting right from the machine. It has a built-in 32 gigabyte drive and a four core processor. 
So you could store your files right on the hard drive of the machine, eliminating the need to use your computer. So you can actually take this machine anywhere, fill a lot of files onto the built-in hard drive, and go ahead and start rendering right wherever you are. It's a, it's a great feature, and I found that the uh, interface was pretty good. There's a lot you could do with it. Once I turned on what they call the virtual USB drive, my Windows machine recognized it as a hard drive right away. Focusing this laser seems to be pretty intelligent and simple. Just take the material that you plan on engraving, go ahead and place it underneath your laser module, and then you want to push down what they call the focus stick, and it's a piece of metal and it's on a spring, and when you push it down, some of the focus stick protrudes out the bottom, and then you want to go ahead and move the lever to loosen the actual module and let the module come ahead and let the focus uh, stick actually touch the material that you plan on engraving. Then go ahead and put the lever back up that clamps in the module. And then you can go ahead and hit this button which will retract the focus stick. Bam. So there it is right there. That's how you focus this machine. It's pretty simple. All right, let's start using this laser. This is a piece of wood. It's a wood coaster and it's three millimeters thick and I'm engraving it at 7,000 millimeters a minute, 60% power. And the cut is at 400 millimeters a minute and 80% power. I was happy with the outcome. The engraving came out with a lot of detail. The color is very nice. I like the contrast between the dark and the light. I do this design just about in every review so you could check out the other ones. Here I'm doing the Tree of Life, and I kept the settings basically the same, except I increased the power of the engraved to 70%. I've been consistently using 480% for cutting, because it works really well. As you see here, this one was slightly thinner than the other one. This one comes out to 282. I really liked how it came out. It's slightly darker than the other one. There's no severe charring on the back. Yeah, I was thrilled with the way this came out. The detail is really nice. Look how clean that is. You can tell the air assist really made a difference. This is a piece of wood that came with the laser. It's 10 millimeter thick, and I went ahead and cut this at 100 millimeters a minute and 100% power. And it went through very easily. This was the recommended settings to cut through a 10 millimeter piece of wood. I felt it went through pretty easily, so I went ahead and I changed the settings a little bit. And I left the, the power at 100, but I went ahead and changed the speed to 200 millimeters. This is in real time here, so I wanted to give you an idea of the actual speed of the cutting under these circumstances. And it cut through well. I mean, I just had it, there was a slight click when I pushed on it. But otherwise, it came through very easily. So I was pretty impressed with that. I don't cut a lot of wood because I'm mostly dealing with leather. All right, this is a pretty thick piece of black acrylic. Actually, it's exactly 9.65 millimeters thick. And I used the recommended settings for this particular piece of acrylic, which was 60 millimeters a minute at 100% power at two passes. And it cut out really well, as you'll see in a second. That's one solid piece of acrylic, too. So I was pretty impressed. I don't deal with a lot of acrylic, but I will find a reason to start playing with it. Because it is fun to cut, I have to admit. And this is one thick chunk. I do love engraving on slate, and I did this at 5,000 millimeters a minute and 60% power, and it took 22 minutes. I wanted to show you the difference between my other 20 watt laser and the Algo laser. If you see, look at the design on her, on her dress and the webbing is so much more detailed, I found, from the Algo laser Delta. And these were both done at the same speed and same power. In fact, it came out so nice and the detail was that much better that I wanted to see if I cranked it up, what it would do. So this is 11,000 millimeters a minute 
and 70% power, and it came out great. I was thrilled. And this is something my other laser, I don't think would have been able to do with such detail. It cut my time in half. Literally, this went from do, from taking 22 minutes to like 10 minutes. Here I did it again with little Grugo with the lightsaber at 11,000 millimeters. This took me 12 minutes and 31 seconds. This normally would have taken me about 24 minutes. So it literally cut my time in half, and I'm so thrilled with the outcome. I started realizing that I could really crank this machine up and get excellent results. So this I did at 9,000 millimeters a minute and 60% power, which is something I would have normally done at 5,000 millimeters a minute and 40% power. And it came out really nice. In fact, the next one I did, I cranked up to 15,000 millimeters a minute and 60% power. Yeah, I was thrilled. Here, let me explain to you. All right, let's go ahead and discuss these three different pieces of leather here. They all have the same design, and I did them all at different speeds and different power. This was the first one I did, and I used a setting that I normally do with my other lasers. And I noticed, although it cut it out fine, there was a lot of like white specks in it. And I was curious why this was happening. This one I did at 6,000 millimeters a minute and 50% power. The cut speed I've been keeping pretty consistent because it cuts really well at 400 millimeters a minute and 80% power. But I wasn't thrilled with this and I wanted to figure out why. So I went ahead and cranked up the machine and I did look how much nicer this one came out. This one I'm very happy with. And not only that, but I increased it to 9,000 millimeters a minute and 60% power. I cut it at the same amount of uh, power and speed as the other one, 400 millimeters a minute, 80% power. And because I sped this up, it only took seven minutes to do, which was excellent. I got a little paper in there still. There we go. Now I was curious at that point, Let's crank the machine up and see what it does. It can go a lot faster than this, but I didn't want to go crazy. So I went ahead and this, did this one at 15,000 millimeters a minute at 80% power. And I cut it at the same thing. And this only took 5 minutes and 28 seconds. So it shows you the, the faster you go, obviously, the quicker it's going to get done. And if you're trying to make a bunch of stuff, you want to get it done as fast as possible. This one's nice. It came out lighter than I personally like because I like a dark berm. But I could have actually raised the uh, power setting if I wanted to. But this is still very acceptable. And if I was going for this particular color, I would use these particular settings. And for, to do it in 5 minutes and 28 seconds, I mean, that's fantastic. As you see, it cut really well. There's no real charring on the back that I'm not really concerned with at this point. But from my favorite was the one that came out right here. And this one was at 9,000 millimeters a minute, 60% power. Seeing how fast this laser was working, I was really curious to see how it will cut out a pattern, like a wallet with stitching holes. I wanted to see if I can do this faster than I have been. So I set up a test a grid with different powers and different speeds, and then I went ahead and recorded the test. So let me go ahead and show you the test.
After the test, I decided to use 1100 millimeters a minute and 90% power. And this is in real time. If you feel like watching it, it's only going to be a minute and seven seconds. And I'll give you an idea of how fast that speed is in reality. You might have noticed I took the bottom cover of the laser module off. That way it has a lot of space between the material and the laser module. Sometimes when you're working with leather, it could roll up or as you cut it, it'll peel up and the laser module can run into it. This has happened to me a few times. That's why I'm very happy that this laser has the ability to take the bottom off. Of course, if you're going to do that, which you should anyway, always wear the proper glasses when you use a laser. This would be very dangerous right here if I didn't have my laser glasses on. And make sure that you get the right glasses. This laser, like most lasers, came with glasses, but for me, I wanted to make sure and I bought some regulated glasses that are certified. I'll have a link to the ones that I purchased. Regardless of where you get your glasses, make sure that they're certified. Normally, the lenses will be engraved with the certificate, so you want to look for something like that. You want to make sure they're certified and regulated either by the European or the American standard for eyeglasses for lasers. You might notice I'm pulling up really slow here because just in case it didn't cut, I'm really low on this leather. So I wanted to make sure that it was cut before I tug on it because you can do another pass if necessary. But once you push the leather anywhere, it's not going to cut in the same place. Thank you very much for watching this review. I hope it was helpful in some way and you got to learn how the Algo Laser Delta works. I, for one, am a fan of this particular laser. And thank you once again. Y'all come back now, you hear?